I'm afraid Burnham's comet turned out to be something of a disappointment. We've just had some amazing photographs sent back by the American probe to Mars, Mariner 6. This month's Sky at Night is about the distances of the stars. Hello to the first ever Sky at Night from Stonehenge. But at the present moment, unfortunately, we run into one of these banks of cloud. What we planned to do was to start off by showing you some stars, and then go on to the moon. I can't no. see a single star at the moment. It's totally obscured. Just as I got it on the crosswires, it blacked right out. How absolutely typical. There's nothing we can do about it. Major Yuri Gagarin, just about to report mission accomplished to Mr. Khrushchev. You know, if I'd come on the air in 1957 and said that within five years I'd be showing you pictures of the first man to go round the Earth in orbit in a spaceship, well, I think you'd have regarded me as mad. Of course, rockets have now been there, two Russian ones, Venera 5 and 6, parachuted down through Venus's atmosphere and landed on the planet, sending back signals as they did so. This is Mars. Incredible pictures sent back from Viking, showing a red, rock-strewn landscape under a pink sky. And these pictures would have seen science fiction not so very many years ago. Let's begin our tour between the planets. Right, on this occasion then, I'll be Voyager 1. Now, I was launched from Earth in September 1977, and I was aimed at a point in the solar system where Jupiter will be in 1979. So, in that intervening period, I've been moving off in this direction. I've been gradually feeling the immense gravitational attraction of Jupiter, and as I get closer and closer, I'm accelerated towards Jupiter, moving faster and faster. What are you aiming to do, John? Well, we're going to photograph the sky from... Uh, For some uh, celestial uh, events, such as eclipses, the sky at night had no choice but to take to sea. I gather you'll get a handhold. Yes, I'm intending to do it that way because I believe you can hold it just as steadily that way on a, on a heaving deck as you can on a tripod. And there's the corona, and there's a brilliant prominence to the side of the sun. And it's back to the high seas in 1998. Once again, weather conditions were perfect. The diamond ring! is upon us. Wow! <laughs> One lovely red prominence, at the, almost at the top of the sun, this being right here. We were all looking forward to the eclipse in Cornwall. The day before the eclipse was a most stunningly sunny day, and then on the day of the eclipse it absolutely hammered down with rain most of the day. I think the Cameron got one slight shot of partiality. Most of the rest of the program we sat under umbrellas muttering. At the moment of totality, about three million flashlights went off in Falmouth, which is probably brighter than the solar corona. The flood is about to start. It's right on the very limb. I can see it just cutting through the top of the photosphere. What's the computer showing you? It's showing uh, Venus about halfway onto the solar disk now. About four or five minutes' time, we should see the uh, black drop. I can see it quite clearly, and there's no mistaking it now. Well, that was absolutely great. One of the most exciting things I've ever seen. And remember that beneath those deceptively cool-looking clouds, there are scorching hot craters. And I'll look forward again to seeing you next month. And thank you for watching us. The sky is now completely overcast. Good night. Good night. Good night.